everybody, welcome back to the shop. So recently I posted a video where I used my CNC machine to draw a picture. This picture, actually. And I used a simple attachment that I created out of a wooden block. Very simple. It is a high gear clamp, Sharpie marker, stop on the top to hold it in place, and we started drawing. Now I had a viewer that was so intrigued by that drawing of old Mr. Atlas that he said, hey, would you mind giving me some input to make a more professional version? Now I gotta be honest, I didn't think anything was gonna come with that little conversation, but we messaged back and forth, he bounced ideas off me, took a few of my suggestions, and what this gentleman created, to me, is a game changer. I have had so much fun with this thing. Let me show you what it is. 3D printed device that mounts to your router and allows you to draw with a simple one of these guys. It allows you to change this out when it runs out. You pause the machine, take this out and put it in. You don't lose your Z0. You don't lose your X and Y. This thing is really, really incredible. Let me show you something that this thing can do. He had enough foresight to think that you're going to have to change the marker. So he made the front plate. Now this one says Hinkle on it. That's custom, obviously. But he had enough foresight to think you're going to have to change the marker. How am I going to do that without wrecking the Z0? Simple. Earth magnets on the mounting plate. Now this will fit a Makita router or a DeWalt router. He thought about that too. He also thought about the fact that when the machine lifts off of the material, the marker needs to lift as well. It needs to come up off the page and move. We talked about how to accomplish that. He corrected his design and fixed that. And I also said, we need down pressure on the marker to make sure that it's pushing correctly on the paper, cardboard, whatever you're using. So. He inserted a spring in inside this cap. So when you take this marker and you simply slide it down into the holder, like so, put the cap on. I am thoroughly impressed with this thing, by the way. He created enough travel so that it will stay on the paper. He created a stop so it'll lift off the paper. And the things that I've drawn with this are just incredible. Enough gabbing. Let me get you on the machine over here and show you what we can do with this thing. Now, he's also going to make these available. I'll put a link in the bottom of my description so that you can get a hold of Mr. Doyle, as his name, and you can contact him if you'd like to purchase one of these. But let's get on the machine. All right, let me bring the machine forward and I'll show you how easy it is to put this thing on. Now, I removed the dust arms on this from the Pawn CNC dust boot that I have. And all you do with this thing is slide it on like so. And what I like to do is line up the cap with the bottom of this aluminum extrusion right here. Your simple Allen wrench, tighten it up, snug it up till you can just barely move it. Then I eyeball line with the center of the collet behind it so that it's straight. Tighten it up. It doesn't move. Take the magnetic front off, take the cap off, set the cap aside, load your marker, put your cap back on, and you just became an artist. All right, let's see what we can do with this thing. I got this piece of thick cardboard. It sits in a window blocking the sun in my office. And I thought, let's put some kind of a design on here and I'll take it back over to the office and at least have something nice to look at instead of this ugly piece of cardboard. So as you watch this thing go around and create the pass, it's incredible that it, it just, it's precise as all get out. It's a little mesmerizing watching this thing go around and around and these images just develop growing incredibly smooth. As you can see that marker is running right along the edge of the previous pass. Very, very precise.
Now in some cases if it misses a little bit like there on the bottom you can see a little line. It's just a simple stroke of that Sharpie by hand colors that in black if it misses. But wait until the end of the program to find out if it's going to fill it in for you before you go ahead and jump in there. Now I have an idea with this thing. There's old Mr. Atlas for you. I have an idea with this thing that I think I'm going to make some coloring books with this for my grandchildren. How much fun would that be for them to have unique coloring books that they can color that no one else has? And if you're wondering how I programmed the machine with this, I'm using Carbco software, obviously, because Carbco is the best. But what I'm doing is I'm lying to the machine and I'm telling the machine that I'm using a 60 degree V-bit and an eighth inch end mill. I'm running the machine at 100 feet per minute and I'm using 20 thousandths of an inch max depth. And here we go with the frame. Now I had something happen on this while I was running these through here that I've never had happen before. I had a serious kickback and luckily I wasn't in front of it. And if you pay attention, I think it's this pass right here. Watch very closely the board farthest away from you. That thing shot back out of that planer like a rocket. Word of caution, be careful with your power tools. That's something I've never experienced with a planer before. But my, how pretty that wood is when you clean up and get rid of the ugly. I ran these down to three quarters of an inch, ran them through the table saw to two inches wide. I didn't like how thick they were on the interior, so as you'll see here in just a moment, we're going to change the angle and we're going to put a bevel on the inside of the frame. And if you don't have one of those digital angle finders, I highly recommend getting one of those. They are, they're just awesome. So we have a panel fence there that I've installed and I realized I couldn't use my hedgehog unless I wanted to disassemble it and flip it over and I wasn't willing to do that. So we went back to the old feather board. Here I'm creating the bevel. And that'll run around the inside. Again with my miter set to create a perfect 45 degree miter. I'll leave a link in the description for that tool as well. That thing is also awesome. When you want to create a picture frame or any other kind of frame, that device will allow you to nail it. The joints will be perfect. cutting the angle and I realized oops I cut it on the wrong angle simple flip over and we had it fixed let's do a little test here I'm sanding off the burn marks from the saw and I won't bore you with that for three hours and this is what we've got before finish on the frame it's not glued it's just sitting there but it gives you a pretty good idea of what it's gonna look like it really is incredible that you could create something like this with just a Sharpie marker. And of course your CNC. Now I could have drawn that by hand, but I surely couldn't have drawn it by hand as quickly as the CNC did. Folks, there you have it. A nice picture on a piece of junk cardboard. Well, it's not junk anymore, I guess. And you know me, I couldn't let it go with that. I had to fancy it up with a piece of spalted chestnut. Now, I want to thank Mr. Doyle for letting me collaborate and give my input into that attachment for that CNC over there. I didn't give much. It was 99% him. But again, I want to thank him for sending me the one so that I could play around and use it. I highly recommend you all go check him out. Send him a message at his email address. I'll put that at the end of the video. 
As always, I hope you got something out of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I sure did. Give us a like, a subscribe, and a share. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one.